Hello and welcome to Quantum Leaps. In this video, I'd like to show you how to build a QP application with the QP Spy software tracing system using the STM32 Cube IDE. This will allow you to trace, troubleshoot, optimize, and monitor your QP applications. QP Spy tracing is also a cornerstone of testing event driven QP applications. This video is a continuation of the previous one, where we explored using the QP framework with STM32 Cube IDE. If you haven't watched it yet, the link is provided in the video description below. Today, we will pick up where the previous video left off. To quickly remind you of what has happened so far, in the previous video, you created an STM32 Cube project for the Nucleo U545RE board from scratch. You then register the Quantum Leaps QPC framework with the Cube's Embedded Package Manager, configured it, and ported the standard Dining Philosopher's Problem DPP application. Your job for today is to add the QP Spy software tracing. If you are unfamiliar with software tracing concepts, the Modern Embedded Systems Programming course has two videos. The first is about tracing with primitive printf, and the second is tracing with binary protocols like QP Spy. The links to these videos are included in the video description below. The first step in adding tracing to an application is creating a special build configuration. Make sure that the project is selected and then open the menu Project, Build Configurations, Manage. In the dialog box, Click New and name the new configuration SPY. It will be based on the existing debug configuration. Now, in the Build drop down menu, click on the new SPY configuration to build it. The build should succeed because SPY is identical to the debugged configuration at this point. However, the build produces a separate SPY directory. The first change in the SPY configuration is to enable the target resident software tracing component by providing the Q underscore SPY macro to the compiler. To do this, right click on the project and select Properties from the bottom of the drop down menu. In the Properties dialog box, select the CC build section and then Settings. Then, inside the settings, in the MCU GCC compiler group, Click on Preprocessor. Add the new macro definition and name the macro Q underscore SPY. Click OK and make sure the macro is in the list. Apply changes and rebuild. The build shows a bunch of linker errors for the missing QS functions. This is because the QS software tracing component has been disabled in the debug configuration. But of course, in the SPY configuration, it needs to be enabled. To enable this component, right-click on it and choose Properties from the bottom of the drop-down menu. In the C, C++ Build Settings section, uncheck the box next to Exclude Resource from Build. Note that this is only for the active SPY configuration. Click Apply and Close. Rebuild the project, and what do you know? The project builds cleanly. This wasn't too hard, was it? But it's only because the bsp.c file already implements all the UART communication required for QSPY. I will return to this, but before that, I'd like to show you how the Nucleo board runs with QPSPY and how to receive the trace on the host. First, you need to program the board, but if you just click on the debug or run button, the cube IDE will upload the previous debug binary, which is quite confusing and not what you want. To upload the spy binary to the board, you need to explicitly create a new so-called debug configuration for it, which in Eclipse-based IDEs like the cube is separate and independent from the build configuration. To create a debug configuration, Click on the drop-down arrow next to the Debug button. Choose Debug Configuration from the menu. In the dialog box, you can see only the Project Debug Configuration. Click on the New Launch Configuration button. This will create Project Spy Configuration, but you must specify the C++ application manually. 
you can just copy the application from Project Debug and rename the directory to Spawn. So let's use the newly created Spy Debug configuration to program the board. Although in case of the Run button it will be called Run Configuration. Anyway, time to connect the Nucleo board and finally program it. When it starts to run, you should see random blinking of the onboard LED exactly as before. To see the tracing output, you need to receive it on the host. One advantage of the Nucleo boards is that they provide a virtual COM port integrated with the existing debugger's USB connection, so no additional serial cables are necessary. You can find the virtual COM port number in the device manager. Now you can connect a traditional serial terminal, such as Termite, to that COM port and see the tracing output produced by QPE Spy. But you will see mostly garbage, because the QP Spy output is binary, not textual, which is precisely the point of offloading the expensive text formatting from the embedded target to the host. To show the tracing output correctly, you need a specialized serial terminal called QSpy. The QSpy utility is provided in a Quantum Leap's open source QTools collection, but the easiest way to get it is to download and install the whole QP bundle, which also contains the QP frameworks, the QM modeling tool, various compilers, and other utilities. After installing the QP bundle, the QTools bin directory will be added to your path, which you can verify by opening a command prompt and typing path. Now type QSpy minus C COM port number of your Nucleo board, which is COM7 in my case. The QSpy application immediately starts displaying the trace produced by your Nucleo board, but the output, while certainly human readable, contains a lot of hex addresses. This is because QSpy hasn't received the symbolic information about the various names in your application. The application produces this symbolic information, but only during the startup. So when you reset the board, QSpy starts showing the trace with symbolic names. QSpy also provides communication into the embedded target, and among others you can send the reset command from QSpy by pressing the R key on the keyboard. But QSpy is actually much more powerful than that. It provides a network interface for connecting various frontends, such as the QTest testing system based on Python, which I presented in separate videos. The links are provided in the description below. Another example of a frontend that extends the capabilities of QSpy is the QView monitoring system, which you can easily try. Specifically, there is a QView example for the DPP application that you have running on your Nucleo board. It is provided in most DPP examples in the standard QPC distribution, but you can also get it directly from GitHub. Go to the QPC examples repository, click on code and then on download zip. You can place the zip anywhere on your disk, for example close to your current cube project. From the downloaded QPC examples, you can unzip only the QView DPP folder. Open another command prompt and change the directory to the QView DPP folder. Now type Python 3 QTools QView QView.py DPP.py this will launch the Python QView GUI frontend from the QTools QView folder with the dpp.py customization for the DPP application. The QView GUI consists of a scrolling text window and a customizable canvas showing the dining philosophers who think, get hungry and eat according to specific rules. This is the animated status of the DPP application running on your Nucleo board. You can interact with the application through the GUI, for example pressing the button in the middle pauses serving the forks for the philosophers so all of them get hungry after a while. You can also change the filters that determine which tracing information gets produced in the target. For example you can enable all state machine activities.
You can get as selective as you wish by choosing precisely only specific types of activities. Of course, there is much more you can do with QView. The whole system is written in Python with a TK Intercross platform GUI, so you can take advantage of the numerous resources for various widgets you can put on your canvas. The developers of QP applications have come up with many creative uses for QView, from remote GUI interfaces for their embedded devices to supporting the whole manufacturing process of embedded devices. Anyway, the QP Spy tracing system already provides all this functionality. To enable it on any given embedded board, you only need to define a few callback functions for the specific serial communication mechanism. The initialization of the UART in the QS on startup callback function is by far the trickiest part here. You can leverage Cubemex code generation to get this code right, which was precisely how I wrote it. You are interested in the connectivity section, and here you need to know which UART you wish to use for QP spy tracing. In the case of the Nucleo U545 board, this is UART1 because only this one is connected to the virtual COM port. You enable the UART1 by choosing the asynchronous mode. You then configure the UART1 as follows. You leave the default baud rate of 115.200, 8 bit words, no parity, and 1 stop bit. You can enable the FIFO mode. In the EVIC section, you enable the UART1 global interrupt, which QPSPY uses to receive commands from the QSPY host application. Finally, as with all other hardware blocks, I recommend the low level code generation because it is easier to adapt. Now you can let QBMX to generate the code. In your main.c you can find the new UART1 initialization. In the early stages of development you can just use that function as is. However, the code will be present in all build configurations, not just SPY, and it is difficult to force QBMX to generate code more selectively. The code is also quite bulky, even though it is already the low-level version. Therefore, for a real product, you might want to reverse engineer the CubeMX code. Unfortunately, the process is a bit tedious, because there are far too many levels of interaction that don't necessarily pull their own weight. I also typically use the debugger, where I single step and note which hardware registers are actually modified. This process resulted in a much tighter code in BSP.C. Speaking of BSP.C, apart from the initialization, you also need to provide the code that sends the trace data, which typically is located in the idle processing where the CPU has nothing else to do. Here you actually need to use hand-optimized code because the QBMX generated functions perform buffering and other completely unnecessary things for QP spy. All this craft can be replaced with one register check and one register write skipping all the function call overheads. A similar situation occurs in the UART1 interrupt handler, where bytes are received using one register check and one register read. The last QP spy service that requires your attention is the precise timestamp associated with the tracing records. The timestamp is generated by the QS onGetTime callback function. This particular implementation is based on Timer 5, which can provide a free-running, up-counting 32-bit counter. As usual, while the use of the timer is trivial, the most tricky part is the proper initialization of the timer in the desired mode. Go to the Timers section. Choose Timer 5. In the Clock Source box, select Internal. The rest of the parameters are what you want. No prescaler, counting mode up, counter period whole 32 bit range, no division, auto reload preload disabled. As usual, don't forget to change the code generation mode for the timer to low level. CodeMX has generated timer 5 initialization, which you can reverse engineer and place the QS on startup callback, as I described before. This would be all regarding the code required for QP spy software tracing.
I hope you got a general idea of what's needed and how to leverage CubeMX code generation to help you with the implementation, including for a different or custom embedded board. The last minute of this video, I'd like to remind you that the complete code for this and the previous video about QP with STM32Cube is available from Quantum Leap's GitHub repository qpc-examples. Since you have already downloaded the zip file of this repo, let me quickly show you how to use it. I first delete the current project from Cube IDE and rename it on disk to something else. Next, I expand the QPC examples zip archive and look for the project Simsys PAX DPP Nucleo U545. Copy that folder to your project directory. Next, get inside the newly created DPP Nucleo folder and copy the path into the clipboard. Go back to the Cube IDE and choose the menu File Open Projects from File System. Paste the saved project path into the import source line. This finds the project, so you can click Finish. The project opens with the provided README file, which describes how to use the project. The critical point is that if you try to build a project right away, the compilation will fail because the cube-generated code is missing. This means that you need to open the project.ioc file and manually trigger code generation. Only after this will the project build cleanly, both the default configuration and spy configuration. Thank you for watching. 